an entire world is ready for you to start your career teaching the path to wellness. Mastering the science of mindfulness and the art of coaching to help clients achieve mental, emotional, and physical betterment of life through movement, nutrition, recovery, and regeneration. Because impacting one person impacts a family. Impacting a family impacts a community. And impacting a community impacts the world. Become an NASM Certified Wellness Coach. You are listening to the NASM CPT Podcast with Rick Ritchie the official podcast of the National Academy of Sports Medicine. Hey, y'all, and welcome to the NASM CPT Podcast. My name is Rick Ritchie, and today we're going to do another functional anatomy episode. And today we're going to be talking about, drum roll, get ready for it, you're going to like this muscle, the TFL. We're going to talk about the TFL, functional anatomy, as we're going through a series here for functional anatomy. We're talking about this muscle, the TFL. A lot of times people, especially starting out, have no idea what this muscle is. I've never heard of it before. For those of you who have been in the training business for a while, you know this little sucker jumps in. Oh, Okay, try this. All right. For the Harry Potter fans out there, I often refer to the TFL as the Hermione Granger of the hip muscles. All right. For those of you who aren't familiar with Harry Potter or Hermione Granger, she's a know-it-all. She always has all the answers. She always jumps in with her opinion. And when she does, everyone else around her cannot contribute because she takes over. Hmm. The TFL does the same. It jumps in when it's not invited, and it takes over. The thing about these two is that they can be really lovable, right? Hermione is a great character. The TFL, it's not trying to do any harm. Honestly, it's just trying to help. It's just trying to take up the slack when other muscles aren't doing their thing. Now let's talk about this muscle for a little bit based on its location and the fiber alignment. It can work in all three planes of motion. It's located in the front corner of the hip. Sometimes it's referred to as the front pocket muscles. So it's it's kind of on the on the think of your your pelvis as a square instead of the irregular awkward shape that it is. Think of it as a square. Well, it's at the very front on the lateral side. So it's it's on the lateral side of the pelvis, but it's as far forward as it can go and still be on the side. So with that said, it gets to move in multiple different directions, this front pocket muscle. Well, as you may know, I'm a big fan of etymology. So etymology is where the words come from. So tensor fascia latte, where, where does it, first of all, that sounds like a coffee drink, at, a, at your favorite coffee shop. Tensor fascia latte. What? What is it? Well, the word tensor means stretcher. And the word fascia is fascia or band. And latte is, and that's L-A-T-A-E, but it's, it's family is lateris, right? Like a vastus lateralis, the, the lateral side. So latte means lateral. So it means the stretcher of the side band. Uh, that's, a, that's a big name, as is tensor fascia lata, which is why we say TFL. And when I work with my clients and I say, oh, we're going to foam roll your TFL. And they go, TFL, what does that mean? And I say, tensor fascia lata. And they go, oh, TFL. Let's just stay with TFL. And I'm like, yeah. So the stretcher of the side band, the side band is the IT band because the TFL goes right into the IT band and the IT band is basically a really long tendon for this really small muscle on the anterior lateral of the hip. Its proximal attachment is uh, the ilium, the anterior ilium. Its distal attachment is the T, uh, so the IT band, so the iliotibial band, so it attaches to the tibia. 
through the IT band. And the alignment on the front of the body allows it to move the hip in the sagittal plane. Sagittal plane would be moving forward and backwards, up and down, like walking. Your hip goes into hip flexion. Well, it is on the front of the hip, and it does hip flexion. When we talk about hip flexors, we generally talk about the iliacus and the psoas, but there are a lot of hip flexors, including your TFL, your sartorius, many of your adductors, the rectus femoris, all their hip flexors. So the TFL is just an additional component. It is an additional hip flexor in the sagittal plane, but it's also aligned on the side of the body, on the side of the pelvis and the hips. <clears throat> and so from this side attachment, it allows it to move in the frontal plane. Its joint action in the frontal plane would be abduction. It moves away from the midline of the body. It moves the hip away. So hip abduction, abduction, taking away from the midline. So this hip abductor, as this likes to take over, and this is the plane where it likes to take over in, the glute minimus, the glute medius, even the glute maximus, all can abduct in the frontal plane, but because we're oftentimes in an anterior pelvic tilt or we sit in a hip flexed position and we inhibit our glutes, all of them, then the TFL is in a position where it's like, hey, if you guys aren't going to work, maybe maybe I'll do it. You want me to jump in? I'll get it. I got it. And they're like, no, don't do it. And then the TFL starts to do it and they're like, oh, no, no, just... I'm just going to sit back and chill. If you're going to do it, you go ahead and do it. I'll relax. And that's how synergistic dominance works, actually. The synergist muscle, the helper muscle, starts to work more. And the muscles that are supposed to do the job are like, oh, you got this? All right, go ahead. And then when they say, all right, go ahead, then the Hermione Granger of the world are like, then I will, and they go ahead more. And when you go ahead more, the muscles that are supposed to work step back a little bit more. And this is where you get this synergistic dominance really starting to take over. Frontal plane, abduction, TFL. The alignment of the fibers based on its proximal and distal attachment allow it to also move in the transverse plane. The joint action here is going to be hip internal rotation hip internal rotation. Uh, you can feel this muscle. If you're not sure where it is, do this. As, as I'm speaking, unless you're driving in a car or something, as I'm speaking, what I want you to do is I want you to take your leg out in front of you. I want you to take it out in front of you so it's in flexion. Now abduct it, move it to the side so it's in flexion. And you can do this seated. You can do it standing. Straighten your leg out. Reach it out in front of you. It's hip flexed, hip abduct. And now internally rotate it and hold that hip up. And you're going to feel a muscle on the anterior lateral side of your hip go and start to cramp up on you. You found your TFL. Ouch. So now dig your thumb into that cramping or Charlie horsing muscle. Try to get it to calm down. You can also stretch that muscle by doing the opposite by adducting, doing external rotation, and while going into hip extension. And that'll stretch the muscle out. Even though it's tricky, the TFL is tricky because it moves over the, uh, the hip. So the greater trochanter of the femur can move forward and backwards. So you start to move in different places. And what seemed like the right way to stretch a muscle, just because the way it moves over the trochanter, allows it to not be as sufficient. So sometimes just doing a crisscross stretch. So taking your legs, crisscross them, try to keep your knees pointed straight ahead, and then push your knees down towards the ground. So even though you're flexed, you're a little abducted, you're a little externally rotated. You can push the knees down into extension. It tends to be a good stretch for your TFL in that position. All right, well, what about the overhead squat assessment? Overhead squat assessment, we see that the TFL is implicated in quite a few things in the overhead squat assessment. So one of them could be feet turned out. 
So the feet turned out, and that's that's based off the line of pull and the tibia. So remember, it the the TFL goes into the IT band, and the IT band connects to the tibia. So if that muscle shortens, it can actually create external rotation at the knee joint, which causes the feet to turn out. So feet turn out, the TFL could be a component. Also, in an overhead squat assessment, you might see the knees knock together. Well, it is an adductor, it's an internal rotator. So with internal rotation, adduction is a, uh, a rhythm that goes in tandem with internal rotation. It's hard to abduct and internally rotate, but this adduction and internal rotation tends to go hand in hand. So in an open chain, it is an abductor, but in a closed chain, it can adduct, adduct, as it internally rotates. And then also it's a component because it's a hip flexor and an anterior pelvic tilt is an anterior tilt or a hip flexion, the pelvis on femur, hip flexion, it can be a component of that anterior pelvic tilt that you might see in an overhead squat assessment because it is a hip flexor. So when we say, hey, we need to address the hip flexors, there's a whole list of muscles that we can do. And it's not just the psoas and iliacus, be the TFL and the sartorius and the rectus femoris and some of the adductors. So something to think about. It's the TFL, the tensor fascia lata. There's, uh, there's more that we could talk about, but that is so much to try to, I don't know, we can, you, I can throw stuff and you can keep ingesting, but can you digest it? So we're going to stop right there. We're going to stop right there with the TFL, the tensor fascia lata. Just note that it is a muscle that works in all three planes of motion, and because it can do so many different things, it tries it tries to do them, it tries to do them. So also if you're trying to get some activation in your glute medius and you keep feeling the TFL firing, then that would be a very good time to foam roll prior to doing this, foam roll the TFL to stretch the TFL. And so now it's kind of inhibited and the glute medius is like, oh, nice. Now I get to work. So you may have to do some flexibility on the TFL so that you can engage the glute medius muscles a bit more. All right. Thanks for listening to this uh, functional anatomy episode of the NASMCPT podcast. If you have questions, if you want to know a little bit more about certain things or you have certain muscles that you want me to address upcoming in the next of the functional anatomy series or anything else that you're interested in or guest that you may like for me to have on, please reach out to me. You can do so. Uh, Instagram, where I'm most active, dr.rickritchie, or you can email me at rick.ritchie at nasm.org. Richie is R-I-C-H-E-Y. Thank you so much for listening. Like, subscribe, share with your fellow fitness professionals. This has been the NASM CPT Podcast.